Welcome back artists, I'm Wyatt Paint, and today I have a bit of childhood feel goods for you. A fellow Poke fan asked me if I wouldn't mind painting up the ball he printed. I said of course and he sent it on over. Now one thing he asked, he wanted me to paint it like it was a, you know, cherished antique. Like a father's first Pokeball that he was saving to give to his son. And that sounded amazing to me. It sounded so good, it sounded perfect for my next video. While a Pokeball might seem a little plain for this channel, I'm going to add some extra visual interest by playing with the finishes. Add on top of that, a fine touch of weathering, and even a simple sphere can turn some heads. But before I get started, I need to get ready. One second. Nerd them engage, baby. You like it? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't buy this for this video. This is just something I had. This I've had this for a very long time. So laugh if you will, but I paid money for this. <laughs> Real quick before we get started, I'd like to ask, please be sure to hit that like subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and it helps spread the word about what we're doing here and gets more eyes on it. So that out of the way, let's get over to the spray booth. Let's get started. Actually, this time I'll not be grabbing my brushes as this project will be 90% airbrush and 10% fingers. Well, that might not make sense just yet. All will be revealed. I did some prep by giving everything a nice sanding. I did this off camera because I'm still learning just how much of this process you all like to see. Personally, I think sanding and dry fitting is the most boring part, but if you guys are interested in seeing more of the prep work, let me know, and I'll try including some more. After cleaning them up and mounting, I primed them in Rust-Oleum Gloss Black. Since there will be large metallic surfaces, Priming in black will give the metals depth, while the gloss will help lend a good luster. In addition, I plan on leaving a portion of this primer all the way through to the final piece, so being a gloss will give me my first of many finishes that I want to integrate in the final look. So very clean even coats are needed. So I made it a point to try to not get full coverage in the first pass, and then after about 15 minutes of dry time, I went back for a second coat, after which I gave them the rest of the day to fully dry and cure. The next day, I started with flat red to paint the top. As per usual with my style of airbrushing, I thinned down my paint and started laying down spirit thin layers. I'm doing this for two reasons. First off, using an airbrush allows me to put on impossibly thin coats on easy mode, so there's no reason why I shouldn't. But more importantly, I'm, I'm spraying on a gloss surface, so it's a good idea to go slow, otherwise the paint can break and bead on the surface, leaving a spotty and splotchy texture, which would be bad. So thin and slow is the way to go. You may notice I'm not getting full coverage around the bottom edge. This is on purpose, as it's the first step in my weathering. I want the color of the top and bottom of the shells to have the highest saturation at the poles, and get a bit thin and faded around the equator where the fingers would handle it the most. This is a first subtle step and won't stand out, but will tie together the overall look I'm going for. Next up, I grab chainmail silver for the inner cage. Now, as a heads up to new airbrush painters, metallic paints tend to be heavier and thicker than non-metallic ones. So be prepared to thin your paint more than usual, or even turn up your air pressure if you're a compressor. I'll sometimes go as high as 25 PSI while actively blowing really chunky metallics. Just remember, more air pressure is not a replacement for properly thinning your paints. Not only will it spray smoother, but it will make building up even metallics pretty easy peasy. I made sure to avoid the outside of the shells to preserve the black primer and its high gloss. After each half got the saturation I was looking for, I also silvered the accent ring that surrounds the latch button. Next up is Starship Exterior for the bottom shell. Now, typically for a standard Pokeball, you have red on top and white on the bottom. But in general, I tend not to use titanium white to paint things and reserve it for only the final highlights. This is because in reality, most things that you think of as white are really off-white. So if you do paint something that bright titanium white on like a miniature, 
or even to scale like something like this, it can look off. So my first step for this white is gonna to be to spray down a very light gray of Starship. While this won't be the final color, it will lighten up that black primer and be the scaffolding to hold up our final color. Before I get to those second colors, I'd like to take a moment to thank my subscribers over on Patreon. Every month, your generosity towards me and the channel helps me keep pumping out the content. So thanks! If you'd like to join the Painting Pantheon, there'll be a link to my Patreon in the description below. Also, if you've been enjoying my videos here, I'd like to ask you a small favor. Be sure to go in the comments and write down what you'd like to see me paint in the future. Whether it's busts, more statues, more board game pieces, more props, let me know because I'm interested. While mainly my videos are commissions I do, I also want to make sure I create content that you guys are interested in seeing. So if there's something you'd like to see me tackle, be sure to put it in the comments below. Now, thank you for giving me that moment to make a request. Let's get back to that Pokeball. Before I add any more paint to the outer shell, I want to add some weathering using Thousand Grit Sandpaper. Even though this is a very high grit sandpaper, you'll need a very light touch or you'll scrape off your airbrush layers way too fast. If this is your first time trying this kind of weathering technique, you can give yourself a bit of a safety net by applying a thin coat of varnish. Since I'm going for a very flat finish for this area and I'm feeling pretty confident, I skipped that step. The idea is to slightly scuff and thin the paint in areas and occasionally wear it down to the primer. Now, you may think doing weathering before your final coats of paint may be a little quirky, but I'm doing this to create different layers of wear, like it's been restored before in the past from damage. The easiest way to do that is to do that damage and then paint over it. Just take your time and with the very lightest touch you could muster, it'll pay off in the end. After sanding and cleaning all the loose dust, the shells were ready for the final coats of color. First up, ivory. As I said earlier, I avoid using titanium white as my main color, and since this was going to resemble an antique, ivory will give us a nice little patina. Unfortunately, my ivory is very old and needs a bit of love to get airbrush ready, so I figured I'd show you my go-to mix to get a paint ready for the airbrush. First, after I've gathered a good amount of paint, next I add a few drops of airbrush flow improver. This will increase the amount of time it takes for the paint to dry, which with paint this thick is absolutely a concern. But only use a few drops, as too much can have you waiting quite a while for your paint to dry. Next, I give it a squirt of water to get things moving and jiving, but not too much, or you'll break the emulsion of the paint medium. I finish it off with a few drops of airbrush thinner. This can lower the viscosity of the paint further than water can before the breaking point, but it's much more expensive comparatively, so I only use a few drops to finish it off. Give it a mix and it was ready to go. As with the previous layer, I focused this on the poles to preserve the thinness around the equator. Just like before, you want thin coats to build up very gradual hue shifts to the ivory. Unfortunately, it's hard to tell under this light on the camera, but trust me, it's there. For the crimson at top, I pulled out vermilion for its highlight. Again, preserving the thinness around the edge and focusing on the top of the dome. It's important to not overpaint the weathering we've already done, while getting some paint on them is expected and actually accounted for in this technique. I don't want to completely fill them in. Again, this is a subtle step that won't be noticeable on an individual detail, but will contribute to the whole. Next, I gave each shell a coat of purity seal. While I find Citadel's paint line to be a bit more expensive than it's worth, I really have never had a negative thing to say about purity seal. It goes on easy and it dries to a very matte, almost dusty finish, which gives me my third surface for this ball. Matte, high gloss, and the brushed aluminum of the cage. Time to add one more. Using graphite power, I'm going to be adding a black chrome finish to each of these inner cage inserts. I picked up a jar of this fine ground graphite from Amazon for about 15 bucks and I'm pretty sure it's going to last me forever. It's super easy to use, just put down a super smooth coat of gloss black first. The smoother the better and it has to be gloss. Then rub the graphite into the surface. You can use a paper towel or your finger. I wore gloves because I didn't want to leave fingerprints everywhere. 
Along with the insert, I also chromed the latch button and the outer latch ring. Once I washed my hands, it was time for final assembly. And wow, this looks great. I definitely think it looks like it's been thrown in the tall grass more than a few times. What do you guys all think? Is this something you'd like to try? Look for it in the description below, along with Amazon links to a few of the products that I've used in this video. Keep in mind that using link won't cost you anything extra, but it will earn the channel a bit of commission. I got more projects coming up in future videos, including a life-size Crypt Keeper bust, a Fantastic Four diorama, more Kingdom Death monsters, so, you know, stay tuned. But for now, it's time for me to say goodbye. So as always, thank you for watching, stay creative, and always enjoy the process.